My wedding day took a bizarre turn when our videographer pulled me aside with shocking footage. What I saw next would test my new marriage, expose a family's dark secrets, and leave me questioning everything I thought I knew about love and trust. I stared at my reflection, adjusting my veil for the hundredth time. Today was supposed to be perfect, the happiest day of my life. Little did I know what chaos lay ahead. The ceremony went off without a hitch. Finn looked incredible in his tux, and I felt like a princess in my dress. We said our vows, kissed, and just like that, we were married. At the reception, we cut the cake together, feeding each other tiny bites and laughing as frosting smeared on our faces. Everything felt magical, like a dream come true. Until Mike, our videographer, tapped me on the shoulder. Hey Nora, can I talk to you for a sec, he asked, his expression oddly serious. I nodded, following him to a quiet corner of the reception hall. What's up? Mike fidgeted with his camera. There's something you need to see. He turned the camera around, showing me the small screen on the back. As I watched, my jaw dropped. There, clear as day, was my new father-in-law, Gerald, sneaking up to the gift table. He looked around furtively, then grabbed a box and quickly walked out of the room. Is he stealing our presence? I gasped. Mike shrugged. I don't know what to think. I figured you should see it. I thanked Mike, my mind reeling. What the hell was going on? Why would Gerald steal from us? I needed answers. Scanning the room, I spotted Gerald near the bar, sipping a drink and chatting with some relatives. Excuse me, I said, approaching the group. Gerald, can I borrow you for a moment? It's important. Gerald looked surprised but nodded. Of course, Nora. What's up? I led him to a quiet space. Gerald, I just saw something really weird on the wedding video. His face paled slightly. Oh, what did you see? I saw you taking one of our gifts and leaving with it. What's going on? Gerald glanced around nervously, then leaned in close. Nora, I can explain. It's not what you think. Then what is it? Because it looks an awful lot like you're stealing from us. He sighed heavily, rubbing his forehead. I wasn't stealing, I swear. I was trying to protect you. Protect me? From what? Gerald's voice lowered to a whisper. From Vivian. She's up to something nasty. I frowned, confused. What do you mean? Earlier today, I overheard her talking to herself in the dressing room. She was drunk, rambling about some plan. What plan? She packed that gift box with silverware she'd rubbed with orange peels. She knows you're allergic. I gasped, suddenly feeling lightheaded. My orange allergy wasn't life-threatening, but it caused a horrible rash that couldn't be exposed to sunlight. If I touched that silverware... But why would she do that, I asked, still struggling to process this information. Gerald's expression was grim. She wanted to ruin your honeymoon. She figured if you got a rash, you'd have to cancel. And since the tickets are non-refundable, she and you would get to go instead, I finished, feeling sick. Exactly. I couldn't let that happen. I was just trying to get the silverware out, clean it, and put it back before anyone noticed. I leaned against the wall, trying to steady myself. Gerald, I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry, Nora. I know it looks bad. I just didn't want to cause a scene at the wedding. I nodded, still processing. I understand. Thank you for telling me the truth. What are you going to do, he asked, looking concerned. I took a deep breath, straightening up. I need to talk to Finn. We'll figure it out together. After leaving Gerald, I went to find my new husband. He was chatting with some college friends, but his smile faded when he saw my expression. Nora? What's wrong, Finn asked, excusing himself from the group. I pulled him aside. We need to talk. It's about your mom. Finn's brow furrowed. What about her? I recounted everything Gerald had told me. 
Finn's face went from confused to angry to hurt. I can't believe she'd do something like that, he said, shaking his head. What should we do, I asked, gripping his hand tightly. We can't confront her here. It would ruin the wedding. I nodded. Your dad already cleaned the silverware. Maybe we should just pretend we don't know. For now, Finn agreed. But we'll have to deal with this eventually. We rejoined the party, trying to act normal. But every time I looked at Vivian, laughing and dancing, I felt sick. As we mingled with guests, she came over to hug us both. I'm so happy for you too, she gushed. I forced a smile. Thanks, Vivian. She patted my arm. You're going to have such an amazing honeymoon. I can't wait to hear all about it when you get back. I caught Finn's eye over her shoulder. He looked as uncomfortable as I felt. We're really looking forward to it, I said, my voice strained. As the night wore on, I found myself watching Vivian closely. She seemed so normal, laughing and chatting with guests. How could someone who looked so kind be capable of such cruelty? At one point, she cornered me by the bar. Nora, darling, have you opened any of your gifts yet? I shook my head. No, we're waiting until after the honeymoon. Oh, you simply must open mine, she insisted. I found the most beautiful silverware set. I know how much you love to cook. I swallowed hard. That's so thoughtful. We'll be sure to use it when we get back. Vivian beamed. Wonderful. I can't wait to see how you like it. As she walked away, I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was Gerald. You okay, he asked quietly. I nodded. Yeah, thanks again for, you know. He squeezed my shoulder. Of course. I'm just glad I caught it in time. The rest of the reception passed in a blur. Finn and I danced, laughed with our friends, and tried to act like everything was normal. But there was an undercurrent of tension that I couldn't shake. As we were getting ready to leave, I saw Gerald slip back into the reception hall with a familiar-looking box. He placed it carefully on the gift table, then melted back into the crowd. Finn came up behind me, wrapping his arms around my waist. Ready to go. I leaned back against him. More than ready. As we ran through the shower of rice and confetti to our waiting car, I caught one last glimpse of Vivian. She was waving and smiling, looking every inch the proud mother of the groom. I waved back, feeling a mix of anger and sadness. How were we supposed to move forward from this? In the car, Finn took my hand. Hey, you okay? I squeezed his fingers. Yeah, just processing everything. He nodded. We'll figure it out together, okay? Whatever happens with my mom, we're a team now. I smiled, feeling a rush of love for my new husband. A team. I like the sound of that. As we drove off into the night, I tried to focus on the positives. We were married. We had a beautiful wedding. And thanks to Gerald's quick thinking, our honeymoon was saved. But I couldn't shake the feeling that this was just the beginning of a much bigger problem. How do you move forward when you know someone you're supposed to love and trust tried to hurt you? I didn't have the answers yet. But as I looked at Finn, I knew we'd face whatever came next together. For better or for worse, right?